Good morning and welcome. For eight years, I've been invited to join you at this important event to present the State of the Township Address. I thank the Chamber of Commerce for continuing this annual tradition and for allowing me to be a part of it. I thank Chamber President Tim Brennan and wish him luck in the coming year and recognize Tim's work family, Peterson Accounting Firm, celebrating 80 years in business. Congratulations, Peterson. Our township and state recently bid farewell to Brendan Byrne, who passed away a few weeks ago, perhaps the most beloved West Orange native of the last 75 years. He proudly served his country in World War II and served New Jersey as a two-term governor. He was a Tory Corner kid, like myself. He was a community house kid, like myself. He was a Washington school kid, like myself. But for me, and current or former West Orange residents everywhere, he was a proud native son who never forgot where he came from and never hesitated to tell people where he was raised, to lend a hand, a good word, or whatever influence he could offer to help his hometown. Well done, Governor. Rest in peace. <laughs> whatever the interest, our high school provides the opportunity and our West Orange Mountaineers have enjoyed great success this past year in pursuing those opportunities. A member of our Boris soccer team, Maurice Williams, was named Essex County Player of the Year. Congratulations, Maurice. <laughs> our girls basketball team enjoyed the best record in school history, and Maya Bembry was recognized as Essex County Player of the Year, and last night scored her 1,000th point. Congratulations, wow. Maya. Our girls swimming team won the conference championship and the Essex County championships for the first time in school history. Boys and girls track teams have enjoyed multiple league and county championships. Our girls soccer team won the league championship with an undefeated season, the best record in school history. Natalie Nevins was honored as Essex County Player of the Year. Congratulations, Natalie. <laughs> and new year, same story. The Mountaineer cheerleaders were conference champions for the third year in a row, earning multiple tournament championships, and again, will be heading to the UCA National Championships and New Jersey State Championships. Cheerleader coach Olivia Del Spina is with us this morning. We wish you and all our cheerleaders the best of luck. And once again, and again, and again, our marching band, the hardest working band in the state, enjoyed multiple tournament championships as reward for that hard work. Band director Lewis Kelly and associate director Evan Legatic are with us this morning. Congratulations to each of you and to all the hard working members of our band. As a community, we enjoy the enthusiasm of the athletic fields, the artistry of our music and drama programs, and each year, at this breakfast, we honor the academic excellence achieved by the students we know as friends and neighbors. I take the time now to welcome a few seniors from our high school to acknowledge what they have accomplished and as a community to celebrate their success. Eric Ackerbaum. A GPA of 4.47, an A team member, all A's throughout high school, top 5% of his class, member of the National Honor Society, serves as a Mountaineer mentor, member of the Future Business Leaders of America and serves as treasurer, volunteers at his church, volunteers with the Badlani Foundation and with Kessler Rehabilitation, a member of the boys soccer team, member of the lacrosse team, recognized in lacrosse with the Defensive Leadership Award and Most Promising Player Award, and elected by his teammates as captain in both his junior and senior season. Accepted at the University of South Carolina, Auburn, University of Tennessee, but this fall will be attending the University of Alabama. Roll Tide, Eric Ackerbaum. <laughs> Melissa Callan. GPA of 4.33, top 5% of her class, all honors and AP classes. Member of the Ascriptus English Honor Society, Rho Kappa Social Studies Honor Society, Science Honor Society, and the National Honor Society. 
member of the Glee Club and Yearbook Club, volunteers with the Summer Enrichment Program, and volunteers with Sunrise Senior Living, member of the Institute of Mathematics and Science as part of the Honors Small Learning Community within our high school, four-year member of the girls' softball team, and volunteers as a youth coach, has been accepted at James Madison and waiting to hear from University of Connecticut, Lehigh, Northwestern, Stevens Institute, George Washington, and Princeton, among others, Melissa Callan. Sienna Pisano. A GPA of 4.47, top 5% of her class, an 18 member, all A's throughout high school. Member of the Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society, Science Honor Society, Italian Honor Society, and the National Honor Society. Member of the Italian Club and a Mountaineer Mentor. Volunteers with the Badlani Foundation and with the West Orange High School Summer Enrichment Program. Member of the Junior Honor Guard, a member and captain of the varsity softball team and tennis team. Selected to represent the tennis team at the Fall Sports Captain Leadership Conference. Earned a perfect score of five on the AP Psychology exam. Waiting to hear from Boston College, Bucknell, Colgate, Fordham, Lehigh, Northeastern, and Villanova, among others, Sienna Pisano. <laughs> Megan White. A GPA of 4.63, ranked third in her class, an A team member, all A's throughout high school. Secretary of the Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society, member of the Science Honor Society, and the National Honor Society. Member of the Math League, Science League, and the Sports Medicine Club. Member of the Institute of Mathematics and Science, a varsity softball player, and member of the band. Volunteers as a mountaineer mentor and a peer-to-peer -peer tutor. With over 100 hours of volunteer work at local hospitals, she is pursuing a career as a physician's assistant, waiting to hear from Drexel, Hofstra, St. Francis University, Rutgers, Seton Hall, and Quinnipiac, among others, Megan White. <laughs> Katie Meyerson. A GPA of 4.33. Top 5% of her class, president of the Art National Honor Society, member of the Ascriptus English Honor Society, Roe Kappa Social Studies Honor Society, and the National Honor Society. Student member of the West Orange Arts Council, stage manager for the High School Musical, served as makeup artist for the Thespian Society, and member of the International Thespian Society. Volunteer instructor and herself a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. <laughs> Editor in chief of the Cobblestone Literary Magazine, and recognized with the LBGTQ Youth Activist Award. Waiting to hear from American University, Elon, Georgetown, John Hopkins, the College of New Jersey, and Swarthmore, among others, Katie Meyerson. <laughs> Noor Qureshi. A GPA of 4.57. Top 5% of her class, all honors and AP classes, earned the distinction of being an AP scholar. Member of the Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society, Rho Kappa Social Studies Honor Society, Science Honor Society, and the National Honor Society. Member of the Science League, participated in the Science Olympiad and Vice President of the Student Council. A varsity tennis player, volunteers as a mountaineer mentor and a peer-to-peer -peer tutor. Member of the Institute of Mathematics and Science, interested in a career in pharmaceuticals. Accepted at Rutgers University, St. John's, Case Western Reserve, University of Massachusetts, among others, but this year will be attending Cornell University, Nora Qureshi. <laughs> Aon Ashby. A GPA of 4.65. A team member, all A's throughout high school, all honors and AP classes. Member of the Science Honor Society, Escriptus English Honor Society, History Honor Society, and the National Honor Society. An Italian club and sports medicine club member, tutors fellow students in science, a counselor with the summer enrichment program, serves as a mountaineer mentor, a four-year varsity member for winter and spring track and field teams, participated and serves as a board member for the Science Olympiad team, looking to pursue a career in computer science, Waiting to hear from Carnegie Mellon, Columbia, Cornell, Harvard, University of Pennsylvania, and Princeton, among others, the West Orange High School Class of 2018 Salutatorian, Aon Ashby. <laughs> Ms. 
Lucas Scalora. A GPA of 4.2, top 5% of his class, all honors and AP classes. Member of the Science Honor Society and the National Honor Society. Captain of the Chess Club and member of the United States Chess Federation. Member of the Math Club and volunteers as a math tutor. Member of the Institute of Mathematics and Science and volunteers with Mountaintop Soccer and Kessler Rehabilitation. Part of the West Orange High School, hey Kessler. <laughs> Part of the West Orange High School award-winning marching band and member of the Percussion Ensemble. Interested in a career in mathematics and computer science. He's been accepted at Fordham University, NJIT, and Drexel, waiting to hear from Lehigh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, and Stevens Institute, among others, Lucas Scalora. <laughs> Kafilo Matumi. A GPA of 4.59. Top 5% of her class, all honors and AP classes. Member of the Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society, Science Honor Society, Music Honor Society, and the National Honor Society. Member of the girls' soccer team, serves as vice president of the student council. Member of the West Orange Unity Club, the Jubilee Choir, and the Mountaineer Mentoring Program. Has traveled the world and volunteered at an orphanage in Zimbabwe. Performs as a vocalist in a local band and can really sing the national anthem. <laughs> Recognized with the Institute of Math and Science Award and with the Director's Chorus Award. Waiting to hear from Amherst, Cornell, Northeastern, University of Pennsylvania, Rutgers, Seton Hall, and Wake Forest, among others, Kafilo Matumi. <laughs> Ashwarya Kanagala. A GPA of 4.77 an A-team member, all A's throughout high school, member of the French Honor Society, Science Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society, Escriptus English Honor Society, and the National Honor Society, member of the French Club and the New Jersey Science League, volunteers and teaches with the Sal Mander Indian Cultural Center, volunteer math, science, and French tutor, participated as a team leader in the Science Olympiad and with the W.E.B. Du Bois Accelerated Learning Academy, honored with the Wellesley College Book Award, looking to pursue a career in computer science, accepted at Rutgers University and Princeton University, among others, but this fall will be attending Cornell University, the 2018 West Orange High School Class Valedictorian, Ashwari Kanagawa. <laughs> These impressive young men and women remind us of what is possible when you combine hard work and a commitment to excellence. They inspire each of us. They inspire their classmates and teachers and have provided us all a small glimpse into the very bright future that lies ahead for each of them. Please join me in congratulating our West Orange High School Mountaineers. The school system that provides the foundation for the success we have celebrated this morning is a result of a supportive community, hardworking and talented teachers, administrators, and a board of education that work hard to provide our children, all of our children, endless possibilities. To our superintendent, our board of education members, our high school principal, and all those here that spend their day as part of our school system, we thank you. Over the years, West Orange has been blessed with many talented individuals that have made the commitment to serve on our Board of Education. Each has brought their own talents, skills, and personal attention to provide the community and our children with the best of educational opportunities. No one embodies that more than Laura Lab. Laura just completed her 10-year tenure on the board, and her contributions to our school system and our community will be felt for decades. Our schools have become a model for special educational opportunities and for being strong advocates for the student and the family. Much of that begins with Laura. She is a founding parent of PASS, Parents Advocating for Special Services in Education, and went from being a parent advocate to becoming a board member, 
where she was beyond effective in making institutional changes to the special education programs offered in our schools. Hundreds, thousands of students and their families have benefited from Laura's contributions and her commitment to their needs. For these children and for all those that are yet to walk through the doors of our school, to Laura, today and always, we thank you. As we have seen over and over again, to our benefit, when one member has left the Board of Education, we have been fortunate to welcome a strong, passionate advocate to fill that seat. Ken Alper has spent years as an active Gregory, middle school, and high school parent and served in various PTA capacities. As a safety committee chair, Ken worked closely with the township in seeing the bus lane at Gregory School built to completion, expanding the parking lot and solving a safety concern that had troubled the school for decades. Every year presents new challenges, but every challenge is a new opportunity, and Ken has spent years preparing for this opportunity. We are in good hands, and I look forward to all he will accomplish in serving our school and our children. Best of luck, Ken. As fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters, each year, we judge each year by the age of our children, the passing of holidays, or the milestones that define our families. But for the 308 employees of the Township of West Orange, each day of each year may not be as symbolic, but is no less important. Our employees work around the clock every day to provide each of us and our families the framework for creating those milestones. Our construction code department issued almost 3,000 permits in 2017, totaling $55 million in construction and renovation investment by our property owners. We paved almost six miles of our 100 miles of municipal roadways in 2017, almost 18 miles since 2013. In partnership with the Board of Education and Essex County, we approved the funding to finally install a traffic light at Alyssa Drive and Pleasant Valley Way, and our police department introduced the Take Me Home program to register and help track senior citizens, special needs children, and others that may be at risk. And thanks to your generosity, the Mayor's Sunshine Fund quietly closed out the year, providing Thanksgiving dinner baskets to 135 local families and over 200 local children received Christmas gifts they may not have received otherwise. For the generations of kids that asked for one, we finally opened the West Orange Skate Park in 2017 behind fire headquarters, providing new recreational opportunities for children and adults in a safe and secure location. And in our fire department, in 2017, we welcomed and swore in our new fire chief, Anthony Vecchio. The historic St. Mark's Church continues to make slow progress in the rebuilding efforts and the new diner and the new hotel are inching toward completion. For the first time, West Orange hosted our Gay Pride March and raised the rainbow flag, celebrating our LBGTQ community. We were proud to host the Vietnam Traveling Memorial Wall to honor our Vietnam veterans and enjoyed the delights of our first ever food truck festival. We held the flag raising, celebrating the 21 Latin American countries hosted by our Hispanic Foundation that under the leadership of Deputy Mayor Rodolfo Rodriguez and Councilman Victor Cirillo has become an important part of our community. The Community House of Main Street, serving West Orange children for more than a century, recently opened the new Recreation Center with hopes of providing indoor recreational opportunities for children for another 100 years. And Main Street is currently being prepared for new traffic calming and crosswalk improvements to improve safety from Park Avenue to Washington Street and will be implemented in the coming year. Government does not always need to be seen to be important. And each year in West Orange, among the success of our businesses, the achievements of our residents, or the milestones we celebrate as families, great things continue to happen all around us. Like any successful organization, government works best when we work together in cooperation with residents and taxpayers, community groups, and all levels of government, which includes our Township Council. It has been my pleasure to work with each of these hardworking members of our community. Each day, they work to ensure that West Orange remains a strong and successful township, providing each of us and our families every opportunity to enjoy our lives. 
to Council President Susan McCartney, Council Members Victor Cirillo, Michelle Casalino, Jerry Garino, and Joe Krakowiak, on behalf of this community, I offer my thanks, our Township Council. The new year marked the end of his term as council president, but I would like to extend my thanks on behalf of the administration to Councilman Joe Krakowiak for working together to provide the services and quality facilities that our residents count on. Thank you, Councilman. Each of us, as residents, may know the police officer that patrols our neighborhoods or spends time at our children's school. We may know the firemen we met at a block party or the recreation department employees we see each summer at the pool. But most residents will never have a need to encounter, talk with, or meet the voice on the other end of the phone when they dial 911 and our dispatch center. Chris Babinski is one of those voices on the phone and has been a communications operator with the West Orange Police Department since April of 1989. Chris is a certified emergency medical dispatcher, certified in CPR, and has received certification from the National Communications Institute. In 2011, he was recognized by this Chamber of Commerce and has been presented a Police Benevolent Association Silver PBA card, the highest honor that can be bestowed to a civilian presented for demonstrating continued support to the men and women of the police department and the community. Over the years, he has helped in delivering babies. He has patiently talked to troubled individuals from the threat of suicide, saved lives in medical crisis, and has been counted on to train all incoming dispatchers as a field training officer. In his years of service as a communications operator, he has earned numerous departmental citations and accommodations for meritorious service. But Chris is much more than just awards and recognition. He is personable, but professional. He is caring. He is committed. Whenever we find ourselves in a state of emergency, he is counted on as part of the Office of Emergency Management team to keep the community informed and safe and to provide the important dispatching of police and fire personnel. But even when not in crisis, without being asked, Chris has taken on the responsibility of communicating to our residents through the various social media platforms, keeping us informed of everything from power outages, street closures, or water main breaks. He is a proud father of his son, Dylan, who has followed in his father's footsteps and is a communications operator for the Montclair Police Department. Chris and I met when we were students at Edison Junior High School, green and gold. We are still neighbors, friends, and I have been proud to work with him in serving this community. For 29 years, he has been a friendly voice when looking for assistance, a calming voice in an emergency, and support as solid as a rock when we find ourselves at our most vulnerable. Most residents have never met him, but those that have found his voice on the other end of that emergency call will never forget him. Please join me in welcoming our Employee of the Year, Chris Babinski. Wow, thank you. It's a great honor and a privilege to be up here uh, to receive this award. Um, it would have been possible to receive this without the uh, service of the West Orange Police Department and the Fire Department. I'd like to recognize those of you that are here uh, to support me in getting this award. Uh, what I do wouldn't be possible without you. Um, I'm grateful for this community. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve for the last 28 years. Um, and thank you very much. Hopefully, in addition to not needing to speak to our emergency dispatch center, most of us will never have to experience our municipal court either. And statistically, most of us never will. But that does not mean we are not equally concerned about providing a professional, efficient, yet compassionate court system for our residents. Achieving that begins with the bench and appointing municipal judges that will enforce the law, but will create an atmosphere that treats all participants as people. We have been fortunate. This past month, after three years of serving our court, 
Judge Dennis Dowd has been appointed our court's chief judge. Congratulations, Judge. This past September, we welcomed a new judge. Judge Dawn Donahue came to our court having had an impressive career as a lawyer, a prosecutor, and a college professor. A longtime resident, she has quickly become a respected addition to our court, and we are fortunate to have her. Best of luck, Judge. It is hard to imagine family life in America without youth sports. And you cannot speak of youth sports in West Orange without thinking of the Police Athletic League. Since 1962, the PAL has been an important part of our town's recreational programs, providing baseball, football, and cheerleading opportunities to generations of boys and girls. Some of my fondest memories as a child of West Orange are of my time on the fields of the PAL. Today, this entirely volunteer organization serves more than 450 of our sons and daughters each year. What began all those years ago with an idea and a commitment from local fathers, mothers, and police officers has grown into a West Orange institution. And of course, the history of this institution begins with the legend of Vinnie Albanese. For almost 40 years, Mr. Albanese cared and nurtured for the growth of the PAL, the programs and the growth of the young boys and girls that participated as if they were his own. Without any personal gain other than the satisfaction of watching his young boys and girls grow into young men and women, he set an example of volunteerism and commitment to each program and to the PAL that survives to this day. The PAL has prospered under the example he set. Since the beginning, this organization has been made up of parents, committed individuals, and former players that made the success of the program and the good of the young athlete their priority. This included my own father, who went from a curious father on the sideline watching his children play to a member of the board serving alongside Mr. Albanese for 30 years. Thanks, Pop. Many of the volunteers serving the PAL have not had children participating themselves in decades, but have given a large part of their lives to ensuring the success of each sport for each season for each young athlete. There are too many important members to mention, but their tireless commitment to the organization and to each other and the constant challenge of raising money maintaining their facility, organizing teams and practices, and in providing the athletes the necessary equipment to compete is inspiring. Among this family of long-time serving volunteers in what is hard to imagine, in the coming year, Joe and Lou D. Pasquale will surpass Mr. Albanese in the number of years they have served this organization. To all the men and women of the PAL family, past and present, your contributions to our community and the impact on developing young hearts and minds bodies and spirits for generations is immeasurable. Though inadequate to match your contributions to this township or to me and my family, on behalf of my family and on behalf of this community, I offer my thanks and proudly recognize the West Orange Police Athletic League as our Citizens of the Year. Thank you very much. Uh, for the PAL and growing up in town, it's a great honor. And seeing a lot of faces, uh, police and firemen who went through the PAL, again, a great honor. Rob's father, Mr. Parisi, doesn't get as much praise as Mr. Albanese, but again, when me and my brother started, he was there for us. Uh, Mr. Albanese, if you know him, he was a little gruff around the edges. Uh, he was tough at times, but he was always for the kids. Mr. Parisi was a very guidance, very smooth voice for the PAL and something for me and my brother that uh, they always stay calm when the situation is a little tough for us. And as Rob says, we are totally volunteer. Um, we are a fundraiser. Sometimes I think I'm a big beggar as I go around town asking for money, but if you don't do it, the kids suffer. And uh, for me and my brother and the whole PAL board, we are here for the youth of West Orange. Thank you very much. We are guests each year at this breakfast of our Chamber of Commerce and our business community. It is important each day that we recognize and support our businesses and those we count on as part of the foundation of our town. We start with a goodbye. 
For 63 years, Pleasantdale Kosher Meat and Poultry provided quality products to the people of Pleasantdale and beyond. Lenny Wallen recently decided to retire and close his doors. We celebrate his connection to this community and offer our thanks for being a valuable part of West Orange and wish you nothing but happiness in your retirement. Thank you, Lenny. If we have not ridden in one, we certainly have all seen them. Vanderhoof & Sons Bus Company has been family operated since 1918 and is celebrating their 100th anniversary this year all on the same location. What started with horses and mules has grown into a busing service throughout the United States and Canada. Members of the Vanderhoof family are with us this morning. Congratulations to the Vanderhoof family and wishing you continued success. When it came time to add to our successful commuter jitney program, we needed partners in creating Jitney 6 and this park and ride shuttle. We turned to a member of the business community and the owners of this venue. The Wilshire Grand quickly agreed to be a part of this program and provided our commuters a part of their parking lot. They continued to demonstrate in many ways a sense of community and a responsible corporate involvement. We thank the Wilshire Grand family for their support. However, we recognized that the hotel needed to maintain necessary parking to operate a hotel, and we needed another partner to launch this new jitney. I called Rabbi Tobin of B'nai Shalom and told him we needed his help. He invited me right over, and within a few hours of that phone call, he agreed to provide a section of his parking lot for our commuter jitney riders. We are grateful to B'nai Shalom for their partnership and to Rabbi Tobin for his friendship. Thank you, Rabbi. Communities are built from the ground up, and the strength of any community will always be judged by the willingness and the strength of our volunteers. In that, we have always been fortunate. From PTAs to civic organizations, charities, to the many youth sports programs like we have heard from this morning. But we are also fortunate to have a group of willing volunteers to assist each of us and this community in times of emergency. The Community Emergency Response Team, or CERT, has stood side by side our emergency responders and our residents in times of hurricanes, heat waves, power outages, or the dreadful cold we have experienced this winter. They have manned shelters around the clock, carried supplies, or simply gave comfort to our residents when it was most needed. They quietly, without attention, serve our community events, the parade, street fair, fireworks, downtown run, or whenever called upon. Forty volunteer members serve under the guidance of our township's Office of Emergency Management, they undergo training and perform drills on their own time and stand ready to serve on a moment's notice. This group of courageous volunteers is organized by Director Ken Steele and Deputy Director Matt Dragon. We are grateful for their willingness to serve and for their commitment to our township. Ken and Matt and all the members of CERT, thank you. <laughs> Speaking of parades, in a handful of weeks, the 67th annual West Orange St. Patrick's Day Parade will take the annual march down Main Street. Every march, we are provided a rich, colorful introduction to the Irish culture, bagpipe bands from up and down the East Coast, organizations from all over the state, and groups from all over town come to celebrate the patron saint of Ireland and to celebrate community. And our town's parade runs in the family, as once again this year, my wife Sheila will serve as parade chairwoman, and she will get whatever she needs. <laughs> And with us this morning is our Grand Marshal of this year parade, Don Shauger. And once again, a member of the Township family will be among the honorees of this year's parade. Police Officer Brad Squires will be honored as Deputy Grand Marshal, recognizing his contributions to the parade and his years of service to our Township. Congratulations, Brad. Whether the unprecedented cold and snow over the last several weeks, warmer and warmer annual temperatures each summer, or the destructive force of Hurricane Sandy that more than five years since has many New Jersey residents not too far from us still rebuilding. In 2017, once again, we witnessed the unlimited and often unimaginable power of weather. Though we were blessed locally to escape that power 
as people, as neighbors, as Americans, we were no less impacted. Hurricane Harvey, the first of this year's destructive storms, swept through the Houston area, leaving miles and miles of damage in its path. Soon after the storm, we discovered we shared something important with one of the small towns impacted by this storm, our name. West Orange, Texas is more than 1,300 miles away and is a town of just under 3,500 people. But though different from the West Orange we know, it did not stop our neighbors and friends from offering support to the residents of the other West Orange that needed it most. After speaking with the mayor of West Orange, Texas, and with a simple public request for help, we raised thousands of dollars for our fellow West Orange neighbors in Texas. Our contribution may not have been enough to rebuild the town or any of the damaged homes, but it helped to rebuild their damaged spirit, and that is the most important first step in rebuilding damaged lives. Well done, West Orange. The nationwide focus of support for the Houston area and for West Orange, Texas was cut short only because of the epic devastation that followed with Hurricane Maria. This storm crippled every facet of life in Puerto Rico and many will not be completely repaired for years. Like Hurricane Harvey before it or any natural disaster, everyday citizens discover what is possible when inspired by such tragedy. In West Orange, that started with firefighter Omar Guzman. Omar organized the collection of much needed supplies and arranged for shipping containers so they could be delivered to where they were needed most in Puerto Rico. With the support of fellow firefighters, friends, or a number of organizations in town, Omar helped to provide the everyday items and supplies that are often taken for granted. But creating hope from tragedy is not new to Omar. Following the sudden and tragic death of Omar's wife, Danielle, four years ago, he helped to organize an annual golf outing locally in her honor to raise money for brain aneurysm research. Whether with the residents he helps each day in his role as a firefighter, the people help through the money he raises through aneurysm research, or the people and families of Puerto Rico that benefited from the tons of supplies he shipped, Omar, each day, honors Danielle's memory. He honors his sons, Alejandro and Adrian. He honors the uniform of our fire department, and he honors this community that offers our thanks for his contributions. Thank you, Omar. Of all the responsibilities required and expected of government, and there are many, often overlooked in the daily routine is the responsibility we have to encourage community involvement in the process of government. In 2018, we will introduce participatory budgeting, a budgetary strategy that was successfully completed last year for the first time in the borough of Freehold. In this year's municipal budget, we will ask the Township Council to consider an expenditure as part of our annual capital budget which routinely funds roads and infrastructure improvements. The community will decide how it will be spent. Residents will be encouraged to prepare and provide a proposal for their project. Projects will need to be limited in size, but no matter how small a project, residents can present their idea for an addition to a park, a street, a neighborhood, anywhere in town. The township will review the project to ensure legal and engineering standards. Each of the proposed projects submitted by the residents will be placed on the ballot of the November general election. Residents will be responsible for campaigning for their own project leading up to the election. The projects receiving the most votes will be funded and built. Government should never believe that we know what is best for our township. And in 2018, we will ask each of you and the voters what projects should become a permanent part of our community. The one topic has been a subject of each of my eight years at this annual event in one form or another is redevelopment. The Main Street redevelopment, a $130 million project, is already changing the face of our downtown and will welcome the first tenants in the coming months. Phase two is fully approved and should begin in the coming years, adding tens of millions of dollars in additional investment. The West Orange side of the Valley redevelopment project, a nearly $30 million project, will begin shortly adding to the beautiful new building on the orange side, replacing old abandoned buildings with new affordable housing and much needed parking in the Valley neighborhood. The man delivering that new look to Valley is uh, with us this morning, Joe Alpert. Thank you for your confidence in West Island. <laughs> and 
and now the Essex Green Executive Drive Redevelopment Zone, recently approved by our planning board. Though the planning process has yet to begin on this newly created redevelopment zone, these 70 acres in the center of town will help to define our community for the next generation. These property owners recently invested $115 million in our community for these properties and are looking to invest more. This project provides us a unique opportunity to work together in being part of a new vision for these properties and our future. The measure of our community, any community, can be judged by the amount of financial investment we are able to encourage. These projects represent hundreds of millions of dollars in total investment and an interest in investing more. And for West Orange, that can never be a bad thing. Local government may not always be exciting, but the contributions made to our community are no less important. After recently receiving grant funding, in 2018 we will begin improvements on Lafayette Park, converting the park to a futsal service for soccer with the addition of a volleyball court. Thanks to the Environmental Commission and the work of Councilwoman Susan McCartney, we were awarded a grant by the New Jersey's Clean Energy Program and will soon to be pre begin repairing township facilities, making them more environmentally friendly and efficient. And speaking of the McCartneys, Joe McCartney, for his work, was recently recognized by the New Jersey Forest Service with the Green Communities Achievement Award and will continue to lead our Open Space Commission. In 2018, we will begin installing solar-powered flashing stop signs at dangerous intersections and solar-powered speed signs to serve as a reminder to all of us to slow down. We will work with the Pedestrian Safety Advisory Committee under the leadership of Councilman Jerry Garino in determining the most appropriate locations for these new signs and developing a plan for adding new signs each year. The Senior Citizen Survey was recently concluded and results are being summarized. With the leadership of Councilwoman Michelle Casalino and our Health Department, the more than 800 responses of the survey will provide important information in determining how we continue to serve our senior citizen neighbors. In 2018, we will welcome the 14th Annual Relay for Life and will begin improvements to our township pool, making access to the pool easier for our physically challenged residents and guests. We hope to partner with the Board of Education on trash removal services and once again we'll invite Santa back to expand his tour of our town as we welcome in the holiday season. Most of what we do may not always be exciting, but with the welcome of each new year lies the opportunity to discover new possibilities. Government offers no guarantees, but the best of what we can do is to provide the platform and support for each of you and your families to fulfill the promise of that opportunity. Life is good. It may not always be perfect, but it's pretty good. We have schools that inspire our children, children that inspire us. We have former students, residents, everywhere that are changing the world. Men and women, strangers, stand equipped and ready to protect us, to defend us to save us. We are surrounded with businesses that fill all of life's needs. Technology that brings the world to our fingertips and highways nearby that bring us to the world. All around us, we find beautiful parks that are the backdrop for tomorrow's memories and clean, safe streets lined with pretty houses that become homes with the warmth and spirit of the friends and neighbors that live there. We are different. We are different, each in our own way, from the faith that guides us to the traditions that define us, from how we look to what we feel to how we dress and the foods we enjoy to where we were born and in the countries of our ancestors. There is difference in what we like, do, and say, and how we see ourselves see each other and in the way we laugh, learn, or love. We do not always agree, would be wrong if we did, but after each long and tired day, we all wake and are reminded that we are here, where all are welcome. We are united. Despite the struggles in the world or those among us, despite the conflicts, the concern, the urgency, the hate, the fear. We are united by geography, by choice, 
united in our expectations and by the unbreakable belief that there is always hope. I believe that. I believe in tomorrow. And I believe in you. May we always share that. For we share the responsibility of tomorrow. We share the responsibility for the streets and neighborhoods that our children, each of our children, will one day and forever remember as the streets and neighborhoods they called home. We share their dreams. We share that promise and together we celebrate the idea that we belong here. We share each day and always our West Orange pride. Thank you for listening.